Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. We have a good one for you. We have a lot going on here. Let me tell you, there is a roof runoff system. There is a footer drain. There's so much entailed here that you are going to want to stay to the end to see how we got from A to Z. If you're a contractor, you're going to see some things that you may run into throughout your career. You're going to want to stay focused. And this way you can reflect back on this video when you get a call out to a home like this. We were here three years ago and put in a quad pack. Right now, Francisco dug down and he's going to tie into the quad pack with some systems that we're adding to this backyard. When we were here three years ago, we were here because of the floodwaters throughout the backyard. We were there to take care of a huge water problem. I don't have any video from this job. Unfortunately, because of the just sheer volume of installs that we do, we only probably have videos for maybe, you know, 5 to 10% tops. This was a quad pack. This was a quad pack from several years ago. Looks great inside. There's no grass roots growing inside. There's no tree roots growing inside. It did exactly what a quad pack does. There's so much air. There's so much void that it's just impossible for roots in general to survive. If you have 1% slope on it, you're going to keep the water out of that trench and then the trees and the grass roots, everything, they're just not going to be able to thrive in this. Too much void, too much void for that to even happen. So we're going to take this footer drain and tie it into our quad pack. We're going to take the roof runoff system. We're going to show you how we run that to a quad pack. I'm going to show you what to do when you're taking a roof runoff system to any French drain, whether it's a quad pack or a double barrel or just a single pipe. We're going to show you all that, the correct way to install multiple drain systems. So this house was really, really in a lot of trouble. It was so wet and it was so muddy that we can't even get our ditch witches up to put the stone in. We're going to show you that. We're just going to have to wheelbarrow it in on plywood. It barely held us up. This ground is just pudding. What happened was failure to the existing footer tile. When you have landscape surrounding your home and you have a footer drain, you can bet that the trees and shrub roots are going to take it out. doesn't matter how you build it. They're going to get it to that system. They're going to cause problems. If you plant a shrub or a tree right next to any drain, it's going to be a problem. The question is, how many years do you have before it takes out the drain? This is a beautiful home in Shelby Township, Michigan. And believe it or not, that bottom patio, if you will, under the balcony, that's the basement. This house was built on a high elevation off a ravine, and then they had to lift the uh, basement floor, basically. So, yeah, this was an expensive build back in its day. This house is probably about 35 years old now, but what a beautiful home. It's held up well, but the fact that the footer drain was no longer functioning, and I'm also going to show you some other details and explain to you what happened here to where there was just so much water building up around the structure. That's the basement, guys. Believe it or not, that's the basement right there, that patio. They had to lift the basement floor as they came out of this hill that this house was built on. Really, really high elevation. So we talk about this a lot, I do anyways on this channel, how you could have a house built on a hill and still have water problems. You have to level out a place for the building envelope. It's just, that's the way it is. So you're going to have pockets and areas that water ends up, you know, becoming a problem. It's hard to get out. You know, if it's super, super flat, you're going to have trouble with water. So we had some existing pop-ups that the grass grew over back here. We talk about this a lot on the channel. I like using the pop-up emitter in the north. I find it to be superior to the basin for the simple fact that it doesn't hold all this water like a basin, and then you don't have this big block of ice in the winter. When a basin's full of water, you're asking all that water to leach into the clay which is really hard to do, even if you drill a lot of holes in the basin. So if you use a pop-up emitter, that elbow does not hold very much water. The 
problem with pop-up emitters, the turf grass grows over them so fast, and now your drainage system can't work. So here's the old pop-up. You can see it. It's really small. The grass grew over it, and the roof runoff system could not function. It could not work. The water could not daylight. That's what that means when you say take your water to daylight. This is a system where you're not taking your water to a storm drain. You're taking it out to daylight, and the grass grew over it, so the system couldn't daylight. That was a big problem. And also, the leaves were having trouble getting out of the system because it has all these supports for the center spring. This is one of the reasons why we got away from the spring pop-ups right here because of all these center supports. Anytime a, a big leaf wants to, you know, to come out of the system, it's not going to. It's going to get caught on that. Now, we're going to run a blower through here, and you can see how the blower is blowing this lid up, and all the leaves are coming shooting out. You know, we just want to clear it and clean it of all those leaves. You know, super easy to do, not a problem. I ran a camera through it, and I seen all these leaves, and I said, okay, this line's really, we got to it in a nick of time. It's still pretty good. There's no issues. It's not compromised in any way. It's virgin pipe. We're going to utilize that portion of the old roof runoff system, but we're going to put in new pop-ups, this time with a turf restrictor plate so the turf grass can't grow over it, causing all kinds of problems. Because when the grass grows over a pop-up emitter, now the water is going to fill up in your gutter trough on your house, and it's going to cascade right along your house, right along your basement footing, and your basement wall is going to leak. You're going to have settling of the house because the soil is so saturated. So look at how lifted this house is. You know, it's really interesting. You don't run into this every week. You know, in our line of work, we see it all. But I thought this would be a fun video because eventually the young contractors are going to experience something like this. And they'll have, a you know, this video to reflect back on. They'll remember some things, some tips, and how we handled it. So there, were, there was so much more landscape back here. But the good news is removing that landscape is going to preserve the systems that we're putting in place. We're tying this system into our quad pack, and we tied it into the bottom of the quad pack because we had 1% slope down to the quad pack, and we hit the bottom pipe. So we did a tie-in in in the bottom. You know, we're going ahead and we're lining this with the fabric. We are going to have a roof runoff system inside our French drain, and I'll show you guys how we do that. A lot of people ask all the time, how do you tie a gutter downspout into a French drain? Well, I'm going to show you how you incorporate a gutter downspout into a French drain. Never tie a downspout into a French drain. That will take it out. It's going to fill the French drain pipe full of debris, Organic material is going to break down, just become, you know, heavy compost sludge. And even if somebody comes and jets it out, you know, tries to wash it out, all the perforations in the pipe get full of debris. So when the perforations are full of debris, the system's not going to work its best. It's going to be compromised. So keep garbage out of your French drain system, no matter what kind of French drain it is. The water problem was so bad back here that this was an emergency system. What that meant was we were booked out months and months and months, and I had to put this in front of everything else because I worried about this giant house, this massive build, this massive structure, and everything was sitting on pudding. The soil was so loaded with water, it was so saturated, and it was saturated so deep I just worried that there was going to be some settling of this balcony, settling of this house, and it was going to be catastrophic. It was going to cost the homeowners, you know, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars here. All right, so you see how the guys unrolled the roll of perforated drain tile? That's what you want to do. It makes your job so much easier. If you're a homeowner, a DIYer, or a young contractor, and you're sitting there with this roll, and you're trying to pull pipe off of it, it's going to bind, it's going to, you know, twist, it's going to be a problem. Unroll it. Unroll that coil. Make it lay flat on the ground. That's what these guys did. And they pulled this through so nice. You know, they have a lot of existing stuff as well that they got to deal with. And this thing's serpentining, you know, whether it's going under irrigation lines or underneath landscape edging. It's winding through here. But how did they get that in? You just watched it. You know, rewind it, watch it again, back up, watch it again. I mean, that was just a group of veterans showing you how to get a job done. 
how to do it efficiently. These guys do this every day. So, of course, they have it down. That was really, really nice. That went in really, really nice. So now we have the perforated drain pipe, the French drain, that's going to be there for the footer drain. That's going to be the footer drain, the new footer drain for this home. We went ahead and replaced everything that was no longer working. I ran a camera through the entire system, so I know what was good. I know what was no longer you know, worth keeping and what we just had to you know, completely replace. I mean, this turned out really, really nice. And the guys are going to, you know, basically have a roof runoff system intertwined with a footer French drain. And then we're having all that water go to our quad pack. So we're going to evacuate it off the property with no problem. This quad pack ran a couple hundred feet and it was tied into a city storm drain. So that was pretty cool. You know, you see how the guys are measuring this. Pay attention to this. It's going to help you DIYers, going to help the young contractors. Go ahead and, you know, take that fitting and, you know, lay that stuff down and take a look and see what you have for length. Don't cut it too short. Don't leave it too long. Makes your job so much easier when you do this part right. You can see that Valente is very experienced at this. Very nice. Really nice how he went about cutting that and getting a really really nice fit with this fitting go ahead and it just snaps nice look at that beautiful work by a veteran crew i mean these guys know what they're doing you can see that they tile tape the roof runoff system we don't want the roof runoff system to leak we want to catch every drop of water we believe when the water comes down the downspout from the gutter above we want to catch all that water we don't want to let any of it go that is basically the very principles to a great roof runoff system is if you build it to catch every drop of water that comes down that downspout and you evacuate it from the premises once you catch it it's a nightmare to regather it if you let any of it go so just you know some advice to the DIYer really be vigilant to tape up all of your fittings on your roof runoff system and always take it to a pop-up emitter with a turf restrictor plate always so that you're not dealing with a system that you put your sweat equity into your hard-earned money into good materials your time and then the grass grows over a tiny little you know four inch pop-up and it's done it's done it's the same as not having a system at all. You're not evacuating the water. It's going to pour right along the foundation of the house. So we're going to show you how you run the roof runoff system right over top of a quad pack or right over top of a French drain. Look at this beautiful work. You can see that there was a pipe that came out from underneath the basement floor there and that footer drain. You know, we went ahead and connected to that. We cut out the old one that was, you know, completely um, taken out. It was no good. And what's great is there's no plants in this bed anymore. We have a, a row right here of some yew. And they like dry feet. They don't like the water. You know, all I can say is I do my best. I, you know, I tell the homeowners, I know you like to have landscape. I understand that. But the further you keep the landscape away from your French drain, the better off your French drain is going to be. So keep that in mind. You know, people ask me all the time how close, you know, as far as planting to a French drain. Typically, I wouldn't put a shrub. I wouldn't put a shrub any closer than eight feet, you know, eight, ten feet. And trees, well, that's a whole nother matter. I mean, trees, they're just going to reach out there 50 feet and take your system out. So, I mean, I with trees, unfortunately, we don't have that luxury of being, you know, always 50 feet off a tree. That's the problem. But we do our best, and then we build them so that they dry out the tree roots and do the, do what we can to discourage them. If you're going to end up building next to a tree, you're going to want 2% slope because you want to leave that completely dry. You want every drop of water out of that trench. And the more slope you have, the better off you'll be. You'll leave less water behind for the tree roots. The subsoil was so unstable, we couldn't even get our ditch witch up there to dump the stone. We had to dump it in wheelbarrows. 
And even where the ditch witch is now parked on the plywood, it is so soft. It's just so soft because when you load the soil like that and you just keep loading it and loading it, it's like it wicks its way through the entire landscape bed into the yard. Our quad pack, once you finally get to that point, yeah, we took care of all the bulk water out in the grass. That's why we can actually drive in and out with our big 1550SK ditch witch there is because we have that quad pack and it's keeping that ground firm. It was doing its job. But you can see how the guys are packing the stone around the pipe. This will make it so strong that we can drive our ditch witch right over top of this. You'll see the guys driving over top of this system with the ditch witch as they maneuver towards the wheelbarrows, trying to dump some stone in. Won't hurt it. Once you pack stone around this pipe, the pipe's already so strong, it's the strongest single wall pipe in the world. And virgin pipe is so much stronger than recycled pipe. The recycled pipe is the black pipe. The blue and yellow pipe, that's virgin material. So it's so much stronger. It doesn't split, it don't collapse like the recycled black pipe. That Home Depot and Lowe's pipe, that black recycled pipe, very thin and flimsy, and it gives corrugated pipe a really bad name. So always make sure when you're putting in a roof runoff system or a footer drain tile that you buy quality pipe. You know, we spend so much money on our homes when it comes to decorating. When it comes to flooring, when it comes to blinds, I mean, the list is long. Why don't we, you know, look at our drainage systems the same way? We want quality. We want something that's going to work. I mean, that is so important. Our drainage system is so much more important than the kind of rug you have on the floor, the, the type of blinds you pick. I mean, yeah, I get it. It's gratifying because it's something you see every day. But drainage, there needs to be more of an emphasis on drainage. People need to really understand the urgency to have good quality drain pipe, good quality system. You know, invest in your home. The biggest home improvement you could make is a good drainage system. Your home is the largest investment in your portfolio for most people. You want to protect that investment. All right, so for everybody that's always wondering how to tie in a roof runoff system into a French drain, how to tie in a downspout into a French drain system, back the video up and take a look at that. That was textbook. The way the guys went ahead with a D-box to catch the shingle gravel, you know, like really heavy objects, you know, heavy debris, and then they went to a pop-up. The pop-up's laying right in the stone in the French drain, and it has some holes drilled in it, so the water's going to run right out of it. Meanwhile, we're going to surround it by turf grass, when we put the system back together and we'll show that soon as we complete this system and what happens is the debris that finds its way out of the pop-up just ends up in the grass and the lawnmower goes ahead and just mulches it up it's no big deal so that is a really really key and important element to drainage systems i always see Unfortunately, contractors and landscapers and a lot of channels that are on YouTube, they're tying in a downspout into a French drain system. Well, this is because of laziness. They don't want to run a separate pipe for it. They don't want to take care of it the right way. It's just a lazy way of going about it. And a lot of these French drains these guys are building with trenchers, they're garbage. They don't have enough stone. They're not going to draw in the water. So they got to do a direct tie-in. Don't do it. Don't do it. They're doing it for a reason. It's because they're building a cheap system, and it's the only way it's going to flow water is if they tie it directly together. But it's going to not stand the test of time. Look at how beautiful this is. Man, it came out so nice. This crew just crushes it. This was just a swamp. I mean, it was literally a swamp. There was standing water when we pulled up to this house. And started digging back here. We literally had to cut trenches so that we can drain the water out to our quad pack so that we could even work. Here's that D box and that pop up emitter right over top of the French drain. Beautiful, built right inside the French drain system. All right, everybody, until that next video, 